Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to play any game, whether it's installed directly to your computer, um, without a launcher, or if it's DRM protected, that kind of thing. It's inside, let's say, Epic Game Launcher. No matter where it's installed, you should be able to follow this method and play your game through Steam Remote Play. Today I'll be showing you a game installed directly to my computer and a game with the Epic Games Launcher. First thing we're going to do is open up Steam. Go to your library. Once you've done that, go to advanced filtering and choose remote play together. This is going to pull up a list of games that you have purchased or have claimed that are Steam Remote Play compatible. It's important to pick a game that you're never going to play again because you're going to need to delete every single file once you install the game. So you install the game, then delete all the files. The game I chose was Pommel Paladins because it's free, it's small, and I don't mind if I'm not able to play it in the future. Once you've chosen your game, go ahead and install it. And it seems silly to install it just to delete all the files, but I'll show you why in a moment. Once you have that done installed, we're going to go ahead and find the location of Steam, your Steam game. For me, it's a default location. See, program files 86. Steam, Steam apps, and common. Find your game, right click on it and make a shortcut, because we're going to be going in and out of this folder quite a bit here. And I'm going to rename that just so I know what it is. All right. Once you're inside here, you're going to have a all your game files from the game that you just installed. Make a note of the EXE. So like, let's say for example, you chose Grip Combat Racing. The EXE might be named something like GRI5L2.EXE. It's not always the, an EXE name that makes sense. So make a note of it somewhere because that's going to be very important for later on. And then once you've done that, you can delete every single file. The next step we're going to do is go to the link in the description and download Advanced Bat TXE Converter. Click this button right here. I'm using version 4.57 at the time of recording, but you should be able to use any version and be, you know, completely fine with it. But just in case, I'm using version 4.57. Download it, install it, and once you do, come back to the video. Go back to your game folder, right click, and choose new text document. And we're going to name this Old Paladin. At this point, it doesn't necessarily matter, but I'm going to try and stay consistent here. And what we're trying to do is point Steam to our game location so it knows what game to open up. So type start and then the location of the EXE of the game that you actually want to play. So for me that's start and then we're going to go to this program here. Once you find your game's EXE of the game that you actually want to Steam Remote Play, choose properties, security, and highlight the object name which is just the directory of where the exe is located and paste it in there. So again, make a new text document inside of the Steam game. Add this one line pointing to your exe of the game you actually want to play. And then if you see a space anywhere, go ahead and put quotation marks around each of the slashes, well, in between, any words within each of the, the slashes. If you don't do this, it's not going to work as an arrow. As you can see, the rest of it does not contain any spaces. We put quotation marks around those, so hit file, save as, and we're going to make this a batch file. So we'll name it dot bat on the end and hit save. 
you can go ahead and delete the text document. But what we're going to want to do now is convert this batch file to the exe using the program you just downloaded. So right click and you have two new options, compile and open. Go ahead and choose open. Sometimes it's going to do something like day D5 or something weird that you didn't type in there. If you copy and paste it the way I showed you, just go ahead and delete it. Make sure it looks correct. Once you've done that, hit file, build exe, uncheck center window, make sure all the options look the same as mine do right now. Once they're all set up correctly, build that exe. This part is really important. If you do not name it correctly, it is not going to work. Steam will not be able to locate the, the file. Let's make sure it's being placed in the right location. Correct name and save. And that's it. Took maybe a few minutes. And you should now be able to watch. Just hit play and it'll open the game. Let's give that a go. Perfect. And if you go and hope the game launched on the other the other monitor for me, but if you go to your friends list. You can see it says I'm playing Pummel Paladins, and it says invite to play with anyone. Just click that. It's just like any other Steam game. Invite, set up your controllers, that kind of thing. Shift tab overlay should work in the game that you, you just set up. Now, the one thing I have noticed is when you are done playing your game and you hit stop and then confirm, typically it's... Well, we got kind of lucky that time, but sometimes it'll just say stopping and it'll never actually stop. At that point, you'll have to right click, go into task manager, and then end the Steam process itself. Just depends on the game. The next thing we're going to do is try doing the same process, but with an epic launcher game because it's slightly different. So let's go ahead and go back. Um, here and I like to make a new folder called games and then we're just going to go ahead and throw that exe in here so it's like oh okay I just made one for NASCAR 2003 then in the future all I need to do is grab that exe and put it in the right location Instead of going through all that typing again, you already have the XE ready to go, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and take this file again and edit it. You might have some extra lines that the program added. Just delete them. For Epic Games, what we'll need to do is type start, space, find the game that you want to play. So for me, that is going to be Horizon Chase Turbo, but it's better if I find it here. I'll show you why. Uh, if I can operate this correctly. There we go. I think it's somewhere on page three or four. There it is. So install the game. Once you're done installing the game, Hit these three little dots, go to manage, and create a desktop shortcut. You have to do this in order for it to launch properly. And I'll show you why in just a second. Find that shortcut, hit properties. And what this is doing, Epic is a little interesting how it launches the game. It actually uses a URL that points to the Epic Launcher um, dot com Epic Games Launcher and then the app itself. Then you think, well, I could just take this URL and then plop it in here and start the URL and avoid the shortcut altogether. But that doesn't quite work. I can't really sit here and explain why that doesn't work. Um, maybe you could do some testing on your own. But for me, I found that 
I've had more success if you just take the shortcut and place it somewhere. For me, I just like to place it in C, but you can place it anywhere you want. So I'll just toss it here in C. Follow the same process as we do in NASCAR 2003, which is just right clicking, properties, and highlighting the location. Place it in here. And then every single other step that I just showed you before, like adding the quotation marks, building the EXE and starting the game, it's all the same. So the only difference there between an Epic game and then a game that doesn't require a launcher is that you need to create a desktop shortcut and then place that desktop shortcut somewhere and put that location within your badge file. Build the EXE and you're good to go. All right, so if you have any other questions, comments, you want to subscribe, support the channel, please, please do so. I'll try to respond to you. And uh, I appreciate you watching.